Last week we had an opportunity to uh, minister and we talked about concentration, amen? And concentration and focus on Jesus, amen? And got a message this morning that we were going to continue that, <laughs> amen? So here we are, praise God. Um, Father God, we just thank you, we praise you, we worship you. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for what you are doing, even this day, even this hour, God. We thank you, Father God, that your word, that your spirit would go forth. <clears throat> we thank you that your word would fall upon good ground and bring forth good fruit, Father God. We thank you that your people would be changed, Father God, from this very moment on. We thank you, Lord, that something would spring forth in us, Father God. We thank you that a drop of water would hit our internal sponge, Father God, and it would be absorbed. We thank you, Father God, for our spiritual ears, our spiritual eyes, and our spiritual senses to be open and receptive to what thus say of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we just thank you that the flesh would decrease and that your spirit would rise up. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So last week we talked about concentrate, and then we talked about... <coughs> concentration and we talked about consecration amen and we want to just add unto that because god always adds unto us amen? amen and then we take the concentration and we take the consecration and we add a little bit of elevation amen how many people want to go higher amen. how many people want to elevate amen amen, <clears throat> amen. people always want a little bit more yeah i never met a millionaire or billionaire that didn't want a little bit more amen yeah. i've never seen a person that got a raise that didn't want more amen <laughs> amen hallelujah amen turn if you have your bibles to psalms 25 and we we discussed and we enumerated some of the things that uh break our concentration and also can break our consecration, amen? And when your concentration on God and the things of God are broken, and your consecration, amen, which is your focus and being set aside <clears throat> into the secret place or the closet of God or that hidden place of God, then it will hinder your elevation. Somebody say amen if it's so. Yeah. Because we know that Promotion comes from where? Wow. From the above, from the Lord. Amen. So if you're not focused, if you're not tuned in, if you're not locked in to what God had, God has for you. Amen. <clears throat> because guess what? Everyone's uh, road, everyone's uh, journey is different. Amen. Amen. Everything is different for everyone. One of the worst things you can do is to compare yourself to someone else. And we're in a society, we're in a society now where we compare ourselves. We, 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 we measure up or we try to uh, 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 line ourselves up with what we see on television or what we see on social media or what we see uh, our neighbors do or our neighbors have. Amen. I'm just talking to my wife about this prom thing. Somebody was going, somebody had a Sweet 16 party. They had flamethrowers at the Sweet 16. It was spitting out fire and coming in with swords. I mean, it was crazy. But it's a competition now, amen? I drove Aaron on his prom, and as we pulled off and I got around the corner, there was a person, they had this whole backdrop. They had speakers on top of a, a truck and it was just like a competition, amen? So we're always trying to measure up, amen? But the only thing we should try to measure up to is God, amen? amen. The only thing we should be comparing ourselves to is what? The Word of amen. God. Amen. It's your spiritual mirror. Amen, amen. Amen. But we have to concentrate because this world is set up, is devised to break your concentration. Wow. It's set up as it's, it's such a pull for your for your ear, such a pull for your eye, such a pull for your nose, it's such a pull for your taste buds, it's such a pull for your touch. 
every sense wants to be pulled and you're, you, you have physical senses but how many people know you have spiritual senses right. and those things are they, they, they are, are coveted God wants you to, to yeah, I talked about last week sometimes you can be in a situation somebody say a situation sometimes you can be around things and it just don't smell right Sometimes people can have on cologne, they can wash, they can have on fresh clothes with a fresh bounce dryer sheet going all through the clothes, some downy, but they don't smell right. I've just become accustomed to this smelling things. Anybody remember Spider-Man? Spider-Man had what? Spider senses. Things would just, he would get around a situation and what? It would just start tingling. And in one of the movies they would show the hair on his, on his neck would stand up. And he would be like, something's not right. But guess what? He was concentrating. He was focused. He was locked in. Amen? Uh, what's it? Psalms 25. Let's look at verse 14. And I'm not going to be with you long at all. <clears throat> Psalm 25, verse 14 says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Mine eyes are what? Ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. My eyes are ever towards the Lord, which means I'm staying focused on the Lord. Do you know why? Because there's a lot of nets out there. There's a lot of snares out there. There's a lot of entrapments out yeah. there. And guess what? Even the elect of God will find their feet in the net. You preach it. Even those that know the word will find their feet in a snare. But you have to know where what whence cometh your help. And you have to stay what? Focused and keep your eyes ever towards the Lord. Because you know that what? He'll take your foot out the net. so easy for him. My dog goes in the yard and she comes back and she has all this stuff stuck all in her ears and head and under her chin and like those little sticky balls or whatever. And she comes in and guess what I do? Come here. I take it off. She comes in the house. Guess what she does? She runs right to me. She runs right to my wife, she runs to somebody like, can you help me? Because I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> God refers to us as what? His children. Yes. How many people remember being a child? I'm still a child, you know? I'm still a child. And when you were a child and you rode your bike or you got on your skates or you went outside and played tag, what did you do? What happened? You would fall down and skin your knee, scrape your elbow, do something. Anybody ever fall as a child? And what would you do when you fell? Y'all didn't hear that. What would you do as a child? Mom, help me! <laughs> you come in the house, ah, I'm about to die! Ah, Help me! We got to go to the hospital. And you have one little drop of blood, one little scrape, and a what? Band-Aid would make everything better, amen? You'd have five Band-Aids after the weekend. And a kiss. And a kiss, amen? <laughs> but we ran to what? Something that we felt as though would help us. We stayed focused, even though we were out doing our own thing, even though we were climbing fences, even though we were running through the alleyways, even though we were running and, 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 and I remember one time, <laughs> I was outside, we used to crawl under cars. Well, like hide and seek and just stuff, you just, you would just be under cars. I remember one time, for whatever reason, my mother decided to come out the house. And when I came from under the car, guess who was standing there? 
fuck you doing under the car, <laughs> But I'm playing. I'm having fun. I'm doing some stupid stuff. But if I got hurt, if I got scratched, if I got cut, guess what I would do? I would run to my help. God says, come to me. Yes, yes. Now, Pastor Diane stood up here and gave a testimony, which was so indicative of the word. Because there was an issue, there was a situation. Amen? And what she did was, and, and I'm not rebuking the elder, amen, but she called men. She called men of God. She said she called apostles. She called Pastor Moses, Pastor Rasan. People that what? Can get things done in the natural and in the spirit. Amen? Amen. But then she said, after she hung up the phone with everyone, she said she went and called on God. And just started giving them praise. Just started giving them thanks for the situation what? Being resolved. Amen? Amen. A lot of times. We're stuck in those nets. We call the attorney. We call the police. We call the pastor. We call uh, 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 whoever it may be that we feel as though can help us, and we don't call on God to so just pluck us out the net. Take the little sticky ball from under our chin. And she said, once she started calling on God, once she acknowledged God in the situation, that some things, people start calling back. Some things got changed and rearranged. Amen. Now you didn't tell them what happened. Anyone know what happened? All the computers were shut down. They couldn't get flights in or out. That's what they say. But what did God say? God said, call on me. I created the computer. Yeah. <laughs> I created British Airways. Yeah. Amen. I created an airplane. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go over to Matthew 22. God's just asking for some focus. Two and thirty-six. And the reason, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? They were asking Jesus, and Jesus told them that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. When you love God with all your heart, all your whole or soul, and all your mind, are you focused? Yeah. Every entity of you is focused on God. It's a total, it's a singular focus. But there are pulls for your, for your heart, for your soul, and for your mind. Amen? We talked about last week, uh, uh, my mind is on my money and what? My money is on my mind. That's a big pull. That's a big distraction. If you look at real men and women of God, real men and women of God, and I'm saying that other, hear me in the spirit, amen? God will sustain you monetarily so that it's not a pull. So that it's not a distraction. Anybody ever go on vacation? Anybody ever been to Disney World? Raise your hand if you've been to Disney World. Anybody ever you said what? No. Boo, I hear you. Anybody ever been on vacation where you have to spend money yeah. while you're on vacation? 
Disney World. That's why that's why it was the first exam coming. Disney World, a bottle of water is what? Ten? No. It's like eight. It, uh, yes, a bottle of water. A regular, just a Jose special bottle of water is a lot of money. You can get a whole case, probably two cases, for what you would pay. How much is it? Who's been there? Who's been there? About ten, okay, for a bottle of water in Florida, where it's hot, where it's humid, where they want you to walk miles and miles and miles and stand in line, and they have you at their mercy, and then they they know you want some water. You don't want a Pepsi. <laughs> you don't want a Mountain Dew. You don't want a Long Island iced tea. You want some what water? And he wanted to be chilled. People say, I don't drink cold water. You be wanting some cold water. <laughs> Amen. But that can detract from your vacation. Your good time has now become hindered because you, you, you know it's not right. You know the price isn't right. Bob Barker tell you that price ain't right. Amen. <laughs> And it, 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 the pull and the, and the, 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 the uh, a thought process about the money can take away from the good time of being in Disney World. Disney World's a great time. I had a good time every time I've been there. And I had a better time when I went there, what? As a child. You know why? Because all my needs were met. I want water. I want ice cream. I want, I want, I want some Mickey Mouse ears. I want the little dog with no, the walk, the thing you walk the dog with no dog. Yeah, I can't have. I want it. I want it. I want it. I want it. But when I went as an adult, when I went as a parent, you don't need that. <laughs> That's nonsense. Swallow your spit. <laughs> That's the best one, amen. <laughs> Swallow your spit, you'll be all right. But that money can take away from your focus on having a great time. You're on vacation. It's all good. Mickey and Goofy and Donald are there. But you worried about spending, what, $10 on a bottle of water? My whole day is shot now. Because you want one, you want one, you and we done spent thirty dollars on three bottles of water. Just thinking about it, look, I, just the energy in the whole church done changed. Everyone, the whole uh, 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 spirit of mammon done came up. Amen. Amen. Jesus in the Bible there's some there's some 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 stories or some accounts of things that Jesus did when people were focused on him amen? amen one that we always use is the woman with the issue of blood she was what focused on Jesus but just like some of us she did a lot of other things first before she focused on Jesus she spent a lot of money she wasted a lot of time Anybody ever been sick? You'd be sick for two days, two weeks, or two months. It's always too long. So she wasted too much time trying to do other things besides going where she could have had her foot plucked out of the net. Once she focused on Jesus and she had a hunger and a desire and a pull and she, she fought through the multitude, she fought through the crowd, she, she, she was on the ground, she, she, she had to just what? Touch him. And that's what she said in her head. She desired to touch him. She felt as though if she touched him, 
that she would become whole. Jesus didn't say what? You have to touch me. There's a story about a centurion that didn't that asked for uh, a servant to be healed and the servant didn't touch Jesus and he was healed what? That very moment. So it's just about the focus and the concentration on Jesus. Amen? Amen. One of the reasons that <clears throat> one of the reasons that we don't focus on Jesus or that we feel as though we can uh, obtain the answer to our question or the solution to our problem is because we feel as though we can do it. We feel as though we can handle it. Especially men. We feel as though we can handle the situation. You got a couple dollars in the bank. If you got a couple hairs left on your head. If you got a couple muscles in your arms. You got a couple bullets in your gun. You got a couple hand skills. You got a couple friends you could call. You got a couple slick words you could say. You feel as though you can handle it. Because God put that in you, that you are a handler. That you can do things. That you can work things out. Most men in, in positions of authority, people come to them when they need things what? Handle. You call some men that can handle some situations. Physically and spiritually. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But at some point, you want to go to God. Some point you're gonna to have to ask God to equip those men that they can make the proper calls, that they can push the proper buttons, amen, to get things done. Because my focus is on you, amen? Sometimes we don't recognize that God is the source. He's the only source. He's not, it, 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 as much as your job provides, your job is not the source. As much as your husband, your spouse, your, 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 your child in the NFL, they're not the source. God has made it all possible. God has directed the footsteps, has ordered the footsteps, has directed the paths unto where you can be found. Remember, Jesus told them, take the net and put it on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. And they pulled it, it was so much that the nets were breaking. God will tell you where to go, what to do, how to get it. Everybody walking. Two chains said, I'm walking. What is that? I'm running around and I'm getting it. What is that? Two chain said, I'm walking around and I'm getting it. I'm getting this money. But if you're walking, you need some ordered steps. Where the money is. Which side of the boat to cast your net. Amen? But that only comes from a focus. It only comes from a concentration. It only comes from a consecration. If you want to have the elevation. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is the substance. God is the source. Yes. God is the help. Amen? Yes. Go over to... And we are just about done. Go over to... Uh, well, Isaiah 20... Isaiah 26 and 3. Somebody can read that. Isaiah 26 and 3. We read it last week. Yeah, but you can read it. We know it. Okay. You 
Read it one more time. So if you keep your mind on him, he will keep you in perfect peace. Amen? What is our mind usually on? We talked about it. Your money, your honey, your health, your kids, your property, your 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 car, your 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 career, whatever. But all of those things are dependent upon God. really want some money, you need to turn your money over to God. Amen. If you really want a honey, you need to turn your honey over to God. If you really want your kids to line up and act right and stop messing up all your designer belts on them, you need to turn them over to God. If you really want a career, you need to turn it over to God. Whatever it is that you are uh, seeking whatever it is you are desiring, say what? He'll give you the desires of your heart. Not you. Not the University of Phoenix. But he will give it to you. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, God is so... God has a sense of humor. How many people know that? Amen. He shows you things sometimes, and sometimes you just have to laugh because you're just so dumb. You're just so stupid, and you just, you know, me and my wife talk all the time about raising our son, amen? And I talk about, a lot of times, being in high school, and I remember having assembly. Anybody remember that? Man, you went to the G, right? The big G, not the little G. The big G. Germantown, not the little G. Grass, not grass. Amen. The real G. For real G's, amen? <laughs> I remember these assemblies. And somebody would come. And they was about 26, 27 years old. And I'm 16, amen. And they would say, we're having an assembly. And this guy graduated from Germantown, and he's coming, and he's going to, he's, he's a successful attorney, doctor, policeman, fireman, whatever it is, and he's going to encourage you to do better. And we would go to assembly, and I told my wife the other day, I said, I didn't listen to anything. I would shoot spitballs, I would try to talk to a girl. Me and my homie would try to get a bathroom pass. Whatever we could do, because I don't know. I'm in the 10th grade. I don't care. I don't care about that. But you have to keep what? Saying it. Because I heard something <coughs> in assembly one day. I heard something one day. Faith come by what? Yeah. Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. But I wasn't focused on what he was saying. Bishop just said some things are what? Caught. Not taught. I caught something somewhere. But we talk about raising our son and we talk about uh, 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 keeping him what? Focused. Keeping him what? On the straight and on the narrow. But God is so funny because God will show you yourself in your children. Because I swear I say stuff to him a hundred times and he don't. He's shooting spitballs. He's doing backflips. <laughs> oh, it takes 30 minutes to brush your teeth. I mean, I, what, what? But you have to what? You have to keep it. We have to keep developing our focus. Amen. We talked about attention deficit disorder. We all have it. Try to sit and pray for an hour and see where your attention goes. Try to concentrate for one hour on, on the Word of God 
and see where your attention goes. See how much the phone starts to ring. See how many uh, alerts you get that somebody liked your photo. See how many people come to the door selling encyclopedias. You be like, they don't even have encyclopedias anymore. I'll try to pray for an hour you come up with some encyclopedias. Because it's a focus. But if you keep your mind stayed on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. Amen? He'll keep all of those things that you're worried about. And if we go over to Philippians, the word of God says, be anxious or worry for what? Nothing. In Philippians 4. Go go over there because I want to show you one thing. And I think we can, we can be a little done. Philippians 4. You got it, say amen, like Pastor. If you don't have it, say hold up. You got it, amen. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the what? Peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You should have a peace of mind that people don't understand. I told you about times when I have to, I had to learn to stop laughing and smiling, because I'm a laughing and smiling type of guy. And it's just what I do. I can do it in the face of adversity because I know that I have an assurance. I know that I have a spiritual insurance. I know that, you know, anybody ever been in a car accident when you had insurance? <laughs> hey man. And, you know, it's an affliction. It's a light affliction, but it's an affliction. But you know that you have what? Insurance. You know that your car can be fixed or replaced. You have no bodily damage and you do what? What's the first thing you do? You call and put in what? The claim. My business, they come, I say, do you have a claim number? Oh, I'm going to get it. I'm a guy. I got to go get it. How when I get it? How, many? How are you trying to receive services? repairs, medical services, all these things, and you don't have a claim number. <laughs> don't smell right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I, 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 I have to, I had to learn because things would be looking like they were in despair. Amen. And I would laugh and I would smile and people would get upset. Like, it's not funny. Do you think this is a joke? I, I don't. I'm laughing because I'm, I'm confident or I'm smiling because I'm thankful of what God is going to do and how it's going to turn out. Amen? Amen. But I want to keep reading. I want to show you one thing. Um, and the peace of God, uh, 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are um, just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Which means what? Keep your mind focused on the good. And you know, you have to uh, 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 renew your mind to focus on the good because the world is so negative it's so negative everyone wants to dwell on the negative and not so much the good amen but look at this those things which you have both what learned and received and heard and seen in me do and the God of peace shall be with you those things which you have learned. There are people that haven't 
learned anything. They haven't learned to be, uh, uh, to think on these things. They haven't learned to speak the goodness of the God. They haven't learned to rejoice in the face of adversity. I told you about being in, Af uh, in Israel and there was a tragic situation and I saw a person go through something that freaked me out. And I'm a babe in Christ. I'm trying to go play basketball. My dad's like, no, come to church. And I'm like, this don't make sense. I'm supposed to play basketball. I go to church. I'm supposed to go chilling. Like, come on. 30 days in the summer, I'm out of school. Like, this, come on. Then I heard a scripture about peculiar. I said, yeah, this is peculiar. It's peculiar people. It wasn't even a thousand dollars then. It was like two fifty, five hundred, like discount, crazy Eddie slashing price. Like this, is still was peculiar. My God, like what? Like, <sighs> but I seen a, a, a lady start praising God after her husband died. Like five minutes later, and stayed on the trip. Didn't get a red eye or a special flight or anything home. Kept going to all the tour sites. And the whole time kept singing, singing songs and singing hymns. And kept thanking God. And I was like, this doesn't make sense. But she had learned something that I hadn't learned. How to stay focused on God. One of our own, I wasn't there, but I heard about it. Stefan's brother, when Stefan went home, he started praising God. With his dead brother laying on a, a metal table. Head hanging off. He's praising God. I, I hadn't learned that then. But sometimes you have to learn to stay focused, to stay concentrated, to stay consecrated, to be elevated. Amen. We're all what? Ever learning. Yeah. Ever trying to acquire the knowledge and the wisdom that God has for us. Yes. Yeah. Come on. Don't let people who haven't learned something dictate your fate. Well, come on. Don't let people that have learned something in error. Sway your direction. Because everybody got advice. Everybody got uh, 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 something to say what you should do. That was me. We talked to other, Pastor uh, Phaedra spoke so eloquently last week about being uh, in authority, amen? And how everyone if they were in your position, would do so much better than you. As Elder Deacon Psalm Sir Spazer said, they don't know about payroll. They don't know about the meetings. They don't know about the inspectors. They don't know about this. They don't know about that. They go, I, I told her, I used to love going to work, do my job, and go home. Work was over. Was over. Did my eight, now I'm great. And I'm straight. Now I do my eight, and I gotta stay late. <laughs> and I gotta answer the phone. And I gotta answer the email. And I gotta answer the text. And I wake up, my wife be like, what's wrong? I'll be like, oh, I forgot to do it. She'd be like, what? It's, it's 9.30 at night. We're watching um, Gotham. What's wrong? I, I just remember. It don't stop. So they don't know. But everyone got an opinion. Everyone got a solution to the problem. If I, if I was the manager, if I was the boss, if I, if we, if we had this problem. 
I know we'd have <laughs> legions, <Most> amen. <laughs> legions of problems, amen. Remember, they came to get Jesus. It was Peter. Peter cut off the ear. Peter knew what, how to fight. That's what he was about. But that cutting off of the ear could have derailed the whole mission of Christ. And I'm sure if Jesus would have asked them, what do you think we should do? They, you know, they were coming to get Jesus. If somebody walked in that door, he came up to Bishop and was like, yo, 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 what would we do? We would stab. Scotty be like El Cabone with his guitar. Jose be like a little chihuahua. <laughs> Jim been waiting to smack somebody for 20 years. Leroy, I don't know. I ain't going to say what Leroy would do. Apostle Felix. African warrior, amen. You'd be all right, Bishop. Wouldn't have to lift a finger, amen. I'm from Nice Town, amen. Mother White, the blood of Jesus. You'd be like, I thought she could move that thing. She'd take him out, amen. Carl, we call him a hammer at work, amen. <laughs> Put the hammer down, amen. So that's what Peter was just doing. But, but Jesus said, wait a minute. You're not learning about what's going on. You don't know what's going on. You're messing up the purpose and the plan. He says, shall it, I'm paraphrasing, but he says, shall it, shall the cup that my father gave me, shall I not bear it? Which means we can stay here and fight him and we will defeat him. Uh, he could have called down the, the angels from the cross and, and it could have been a wrap. But he said, well, we have to go through it. We have to do it the right way. People used to debate about Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. Well, you ain't putting the hoses on it. We should fight back. Sometimes you got to do things the right way. Sometimes when you go against uh, 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 kingdoms, amen, you have to do everything the right way. You can fight City Hall all you want to. You can fight City Hall, but you have to do it the right way. You got to do it in the right arena. You can't come in guns blazing. See, Martin Luther King was saying, listen, we can pick up guns and I don't know if y'all know, but we outnumbered. <laughs> you look at your neighborhood, you be like, yeah, we, it's a lot of black people. No, it's not. <laughs> look at your president. It's not that many. It's a lot of supporters. <laughs> Amen. I'm sorry, camera. <laughs> Stay focused. Don't have the CIA come make me disappear. Amen. <laughs> Stay focused, stay concentrated, stay consecrated as we're about to embark on our period of consecration. Amen. And watch the elevation. Amen. Watch God just elevate you. A lot of us are so far elevated from where we were, but we done been through June after June. We done been through year after year. We done been through thousand after thousand. Done been through trial after tribulation, amen. And we, all of a sudden, you look back and you say, You know what? I stayed consecrated, I stayed concentrated on the plan, and God just continues to elevate, amen. amen. Hallelujah, amen. 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 At this moment, we would like.